about my next fight, I don't know. We need to ask my promoter, Bob Arum. How much did the Orlando Salido fight help you in terms of developing when another fighter is gonna get dirty? You know, he, he loaned me just a low blow, <laughs> punch a low blow, that's it. And nonetheless, a brilliant performance once again by Vasily Lomachenko. We're now joined by Guillermo Rigondo. Guillermo, ¿por qué no pudiste continuar? Why could you not continue? La mano, o sea, ya el segundo round ya no podía ya tirar las manos. Ya. Perdí, yo perdí. I lost, I lost, but it was because my hand. In the second round, I injured the top of it and I could no longer continue. Um, the sad part about all this is it's been confirmed that his hand suffered a minor injury. Now, of course, listen, I have no allegiance to none of these boxers. You know, I respect both of them. But what I've noticed is, and I forget that when a major fight happens, you know, a lot of casuals come out and they start saying shit like, you know, like, for example, I was joking around about how uh, Vasily Lomachenko said name. And people, of course, going to come out saying shit like, uh, you know, like, do you speak three languages? And just people get really, really, really sensitive when it comes to fights and everything. And people have been really, really sensitive about this Guillermo Rigondeaux situation and the injury, you know, or alleged injury to his hand. Now, let's go okay. read. Let's go, do a bit of, uh, let's go do a little bit of uh, reading Rainbow from ESPN Dan Rayfield's Twitter. On T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy Live, I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe. It turns out that Guillermo Rigondeaux's left hand is not broken. Complaining of pain on the top left, on the top of his left hand, Rigondeaux Southpaw simply quit after the sixth round of what had been an utterly one-sided domination by the brilliant junior lightweight world champion Vasily Lomachenko on Saturday night in their heavily hyped fight at the theater at Madison Square Garden in New York. It was the, excuse me, it was the only time that two Olympic gold medalists had ever met in a professional boxing ring. Rigondeau, now 17-1 with 11 KO, shocked many by getting outclassed and quitting. Now it looks even worse for him since the hand is not broken and he had no major injury. No break but severe contusion of on the left hand, Dino Duva, Rigondeaux's promoter from Rock Nation Sports to ESPN via text message on Tuesday. Rigondeaux and reigning junior featherweight world title holder moved up two weight classes for a bout, and, before, and because he lost, he is due to be stripped of his belt as a part of the WBA's pre-fight ruling. Now, basically what that means is um, Rigondeaux's uh, promoter, um, Dino Duva contacted Dan Rayfield and said, no, his hand is not broken, but a severe contusion. Um, an injury nonetheless. Now, remember, let's just listen to what I'm saying. I'm not making any excuses for any fighter. I'm just pointing out the facts. In my personal opinion, from what I've seen from covering, nah, I'm not going to keep saying it. I've covered lots of fights. Fighters fight through injuries like this. He is not going to be able to recover from this. Look what Freddie Roach had to say. Please subscribe. Me, Your I'm thoughts on something like quarter fighting five rounds with a torn bicep and went the whole 12 rounds either way and somebody like Regal who's not getting beat up and he quits on the stool. What are your thoughts on that? Well, a boxing tough sport is of course, you know, thing is, um, Miguel has a lot of heart and so forth. Um, when Regan now quit in the suit, I was very surprised, but I was a little disappointed. And um, he's going to have a tough time getting on TV again. Yes. I mean, because he's a counter puncher, he's a little bit boring, boring style, and now he quit on top of that. Doesn't look good. Who has the best chance to beat Lomachenko, in your opinion, Freddie? You know, I mean, and, 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 I've suffered broken bones before. It's a throbbing feeling, a hurting feeling that you can't describe. But the, the thing is, his hand is not broken. And and the, the, the fact remains that in public opinion, which matters, in the fans' eyes, the people who pay for the tickets, the people who buy the pay-per-views, not saying he's going to end up on pay-per-view, the, 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 the people who watch the fights and support him are like, yo, he quit. You know, so... He's, he's labeled and stained as a quitter. Now, P 
people are saying stuff like, you know, you don't know the severity of the injury and all hand injuries are, are different and everything. But look how bad it looks. You have fighters, you have trainers saying the same shit during the Billy Joe Saunders versus um versus uh, David Lemieux buildup. Billy Joe Saunders and David Lemieux talking about, no, nah, I wouldn't have quit, you know, because, you know. I'm sure Jesse Vargas, who fights on Friday, is going to be saying the same thing. Freddie Roach is saying the same thing. You know, fighters on social media are saying, man, he could have kept going. You know, because it looks like he quit. Why? Because he was getting outclassed. It looks like he quit because he, was, he, he wasn't the better fighter. And he couldn't solve the matrix. Which one should he have taken? Which one was it? The blue pill or the red pill? Whatever the case may be, he took the wrong pill. Whatever the case may be. He took the wrong pill. So, you know, where Rigondeaux goes from here, it's going to be a damn shame because now, even though I still want to see him against the likes of guys like Cole Frampton, Leo Santa Cruz, even, you know, an, I'll take a Nonito Denaire again. Now the mystique of this guy is gone. So not only is he going to be lowballed, you know, like, and people are already talking about how, you know, he made an alleged $400,000. It hasn't been confirmed, but that's what allegedly what he made. And, of course, there's not going to be too much back in, you know, for ticket sales because there was only about 5000 or so there because they put it in the small room of Madison Square Garden, you know, to be on the safe side. You see what I'm saying? I feel they could have put this in the big room and did at least 10000 but they did the small room to be on the safe side. Understandable, and it sold out within 48 hours. But now going forward... He's going to have a hard time, you know, getting a payday. And also, remember, he was having hard times getting on networks before, period. He's with a, a promotional company, Rock Nation Sports. We don't know what their future is. They came into the sport aggressive, trying to sign up Adrian Broner to $40 million. They tried to sign up Keith Thurman, Deontay Wilder, etc. But now they're not even putting on independent shows. And that's just a little bit of it. So where does Rigondeaux go from here? He's lost his belt at 122. Should he go to 126? My best, my, my thing for him is, listen, bro, you, you probably done fucked up some paydays, so we're going to try to get you some, some, some paydays, even if you have to travel, but you can't do no politics until you get yourself a belt again. He's got to work himself way back up to the rankings to get himself into a mandatory spot for somebody to have to fight it because now nobody's going to fight him. You know, he's a low draw. Shame to say. It's the truth. He's a low draw, even though his fights up until the Rigondeaux fight have been exciting after the Mbeko fight where he pretty much got kicked off of HBO and Bob Byrne was done with him. Still, he has a reputation of being a boring fighter. Also, he's still going to be quite difficult for many fighters. But once again, some fighters are going to be like, well, no, he's not even that good no more because he quit. It's a shame. Now, as far as Vasily Lomachenko, what's next for him? He's in a situation where I feel that he's going to face W. He's going to face um, Ray Beltran at 135 for that vacant WBO um, uh, title, you know. Or since now that IBF title has gone over to Japan because when Javante Davis of uh, Mayweather Promotions had that IBF title, he wasn't going to fight for Seal Lomachenko. He lost his title on the scales before the Mayweather McGregor undercard. Um, Tevin Former in a controversial fight that I have watched again and I do view, uh, view a little differently got a chance to fight on HBO the same day as Lomachenko versus Rigondeaux for that vacant IBF title against uh, Kenichi Ogawa of Japan Kenichi Ogawa got the decision now he's taking the fight the belt back to Japan so you know Lomachenko could go after that um, that um, IBF title you know, before he moves up to 135, because people are saying, what's going on with Mikey Garcia? Here, let me explain what's going on with Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia is the 135-pound WBC champion. My bad, I was making sure my trash wasn't blowing down the street. Um, he's the WBC 135-pound WBC champion. He is the 140-pound WBC diamond champion, which somewhat grants him a mandatory you know, for that WBC um, title, or he may be elevated to full WBC 140-pound champion. He was going to go up to 154 to fight Miguel Cotto. But then he's now rumored, or he was rumored, now there's another name circulating about to fight Omar Figueroa, whose last fight was at 147, fight before that was at 154. 
So the thing about that is we don't know what division Mikey Garcia is going to reside at. Also, we don't even know if he's going to go back down to 135 pounds. And there's a political divide there where Mikey Garcia says he's a free agent, but he's aligned to Showtime. Lomachenko is ESPN. They're heavily invested in him. So, you know, Lomach um, Garcia will likely have to come to ESPN. I don't think that Lomachenko would go over there, you know, for that fight. So I don't see that happening. You know, it's more likely that we'll see um, Lomachenko versus Ray Beltran, you know, before Ray Beltran gets ordered to fight somebody else for that vacant 135-pound uh, WBO title. So, you know, it's a complex landscape, you know, but I can see what's going on. It's a shame that politics get involved so much in this. And it's a shame that Lomachenko gets so much hate for so many different reasons. But dude is literally, he's, he's skilled. How could you not see it? And for him to do, do as much as he's done in the limited amount of fights, even though, yes, it's a shame that he lost to Orlando Salido. I think it's safe to say that he would beat Orlando Salido in a rematch. But Orlando Salido has retired. Orlando Salido also fought on the same day as Rigondeaux versus Lomachenko over, I mean, Lomachenko versus Rigondeaux over on HBO. So Orlando Salido's taking that win over Lomachenko to the grave. You know, that's done. You know, but it's safe to say that Lomachenko should be up there pound for pound, multiple division champion. And look at the names. Now, even he was, even he was, you know, um, um, even he said, you know, he can't really count the ring and down fight as a big fight because of the weight divisions and everything like that. But one thing that you cannot deny is that he beat rigging down off of skill. There was not a situation where the power, you know, or size, you know, came into play. And also Lomachenko's power, in my personal opinion, is somewhat questionable. You know, he beats his fighters four straight into submission. These guys are quitting on their stools. You know, he's making them look stupid. You had you had Regan Dow trying to do that defensive shit, getting, you know, trying to, but the Matrix. So, you know, I already know how it's going to go. You know, you have so many, you know, sensitive Lomachenko fans, you know, not going to understand, you know. You know, you're wondering, like, how is this guy talking about Lomachenko and his English and things like that? I understand you're going to be sensitive, you know. You have uh, Rigondeaux fans to, you know, that, that refuse to accept the fact that no matter how you slice it, he quit. And they tell you in boxing, quitting is the worst. The whole Rocky movie premise was on that. And I know it's just a movie, but still. Getting, you know, it, it's, it's the stigma of quitting in boxing. You know, you're not supposed to quit in boxing. And for somebody of, of the likes of a Guillermo Rigondeaux to quit in a fight where you have two, you know, Olympic gold medals, the, the, it's crazy. It's no excuse for it. I'm sorry. If you notice, his social media was been, Whoever was running his social media didn't, didn't disappear. You know, everything shut down. Remember, he was social media, Twitter finger, social social media, Facebook and Instagram. And that shit is all complete. It came to a halt. You know, this shit is, is dead. Um, T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. There's no more to talk of Loma Rigo. I've talked about it. Hours of videos I did last week. You know, it's no, it is done. Rigondeaux, Guillermo Rigondeaux quit. His hand is not broken. He quit. For the people who don't want to believe it, it is confirmed that nothing is wrong to the extent of he should have quit. It's a bruise. Fighters are telling you this. Y'all may say, oh, this guy's not no fighter or anything like that. Fighters are telling you this. So look around. Coming to this century, go get on social media. Fighters are on there. They're talking about this. They're saying he quit. They're like, yo, that shit ain't even that bad. He just was getting scolded and he quit. And then you have other people are saying shit like, well, he did the right thing by quitting. What? What? Now, me coming from the from, from the past I've come from, you don't quit when it comes to nothing. They're like, well, you know, he was getting schooled, so, you know, he quit. No, go to final bell. That's what's wrong with the world. People give up too much on shit. That's what's wrong with the world. People just give up. And they, they cool with giving up. That's why, probably why you're stuck. Well, you're stuck right now in life and you're not advancing. Because you're like, well, it's cool that he quit. He was going to just get schooled anyway. Fuck that. Fight to the final bell. 
Just my personal opinion. This is T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.